The Chicago Blackhawks go for a third straight win against Patrick Kane, Alex Dabrinkit, and the Red Wings. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Blackhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. Quick reminder off the top to please go and hit that like button. Jump in the comment section down below as well to let me know your prediction of tonight's battle with the Red Wings. And most importantly, go and hit that subscribe button for me as well. Really closing in on my goal of 2,000 subscribers, but won't be able to accomplish it without your help. Thank you very much. And last but certainly not least, got to let you all know that today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel. If you're not already a member, go and visit FanDuel.com to have a chance to win $150 worth of bonus bets if your first $5 bet hits with America's number one sports book. All right, good morning, everyone. Again, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And back in action are our Blackhawks tonight as they finally return home to the United Center following their five-game road trip as they'll be taking on a couple of old friends in Patrick Kane, Alex Dabrinkit, and the Detroit Red Wings, who are 5-5-1 and one through their opening 11 games so far this season, but are losers of three of their last four. Always fun when these two old-time rivals get together. And by the way, this game is going to be nationally televised on TNT, so good news for a lot of you Blackhawks fans will be able to Tune in for the rare game tonight as CHSN somehow still does not have a deal done with the biggest cable distributor in the Chicagoland area, Xfinity, but a good one tonight between the Blackhawks and the Red Wings, and it's a pretty big one for the Blackhawks, not only because you always hate losing to the Red Wings, right, but because they were able to rattle off consecutive victories over the weekend for the first time this season, and looking back at the Blackhawks' um, results from last year, They only won back-to-back games three times all of last season and were never able to win three consecutive games. So opportunity for the Blackhawks to go and do that here tonight. It's been a struggle for them under Luke Richardson to put together winning streaks. Now, can't really put that all on Richardson as he hasn't really had a lot of... um, He's had a lot of subpar rosters since taking over as the head coach behind the bench, but a big one for the Blackhawks tonight for a couple of different reasons. And it's the first time we've seen Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit in quite a while, so I figure I'd start things off on today's episode with what they've kind of been up to as well as the Red Wings through their opening 11 games. For Alex Dabrinkit, he is currently the team's second leading scorer with nine points through his opening 11 contests, five goals and four assists mostly playing on the top line with Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit. And speaking of number 88, he's tied for third on the Red Wings with eight points this year, two goals and six assists. Dylan Larkin is the team's leading goal scorer, as I mentioned, centering that top line for Detroit, seven goals and one assist, eight points through the opening 11 games for Dylan Larkin. Lucas Raymond, been a Blackhawk killer in his couple matchups against them in his young career. He is the Red Wings' leading scorer with 11 points through 11 games, one goal and 10 assists. Those are the four key forwards that the Blackhawks really have to keep their eyes on every time they step on the ice. And then looking at some of the team numbers for Detroit, really deadly man advantage thus far as they rank 7th in the NHL on the power play, but haven't been as good on the penalty kill as their 29th out of 32 teams. Could be a big opportunity for the Blackhawks there, which I'll touch on more in segment two. And the Wings are 25th in the NHL in goals for while being 20th in goals against. So kind of middle of the pack in everything aside from the power play, but have been able to come away with wins in five of their opening 11. As far as the lineup go for the Wings, what we can expect to bring it Larkin and Kane leading the way up top. Lucas Raymond, despite being the team's leading scorer, has been mostly on the second line from what I've been able to tell along with Andrew Kopp and JT Comfer, Chicago native 
JT Comper, who always seems to do good work against the Blackhawks. Then they got Michael Rasmussen, Casper, and Vladimir Tarasenko as their third line, while Berggren, Valeno, and another Chicago native in Christian Fisher round things out up front. On the back end for Detroit, Simone Edvinson and Mo Sider, two high first-round picks for their organization, are pairing the top pairing. Ben Sherratt and Jeff Petrie on the second pairing for Detroit, and then Joe Hansen and Blackhawks legend Eric Gustafson rounding things out on the third pairing. No official word as to which of the two goaltenders is going to get the start, but in terms of um, whose game it appears to be next, Alex Lyon figures to be the one getting the start here tonight from my estimation. As far as what we can expect to see out of the Blackhawks lineup, Sounds like it's going to be pretty similar to what we saw in the last game against the Los Angeles Kings, meaning Philip Kurashev and Ryan Donato staying on the top line with Mr. Connor Bedard. Donato has points in five consecutive games. Team's leading goal scorer was seven, even though he's only played in 11 of the opening 13 games. He has been dynamite. Let's see if that top line can keep it going after chipping in for uh, a goal on Sunday in Anaheim. Taylor Hall, Nick Foligno, and Tyler Bertuzzi going to remain as the second line. Had some good puck movement together in that game against the Ducks. Ilya Mikhaev, Jason Dickinson, Tavo Teravainen, who's been bumped down from the top line with Bedard to the third line with these two defensive-minded players. Looks like that's going to be the third line once again as it was last game. And then Pat Maroon, Lucas Reichel, and Craig Smith, who have been solid together. Uh, close things out for the forward group down on the Blackhawks. Fourth line, leaving Joey Anderson and Andreas Athanasiu as the two healthy forward scratches. On the back end, it does look like it's going to be the same six defensemen for the Blackhawks for a third straight game, meaning TJ Brody appears to be healthy scratched once again, but it does look like Luke Richardson is changing up the pairings a little bit. Nolan Allen appears to be getting an opportunity on the top pairing with Seth Jones, here tonight, Wyatt Kaiser has been in that spot these last couple of games, but that pairing hasn't uh, hasn't gone swimmingly or anything, so I understand Richardson kind of mixing it up here and giving Nolan Allen an opportunity there. I think it was a tough little spot for Allen to be in down on the third pairing with Isaac Phillips, who just doesn't have a ton of reps so far this year. Alex Vlasic and Connor Murphy are going to remain as the second pairing. Those two have been really good with one another these last few games, and I've mentioned how... Vlasic in the past few episodes is starting to turn into the Hawks' number one defenseman. Well, Connor Murphy has had himself a really solid opening 13 games as well. I need to give him a lot of credit because I've given him a lot of flack on the show these last few years. He's got six assists through the opening 13 games as a plus five for the Blackhawks. So a lot of good work out of Connor Murphy, and that's pivotal. If they can get big play out of him on the back end, once Alec Martinez returns, that's going to give this Blackhawks team some much better depth on the blue line. And I will have an update on Alec Martinez during segment three to close out today's episode. That leaves Wyatt Kaiser now down on the third pairing with Isaac Phillips. Again, TJ Brody appears to be scratched for a third consecutive game. In that for the Blackhawks, we have no official words. Same with Detroit, as I mentioned. But based on what we saw in practice yesterday down at Fifth Third Arena, it looked like Peter Morazic was the one who was taking the first team reps. And with the Blackhawks having a back end, uh, having a back to back, this game against Detroit is the front end of it, excuse me. They'll have a back end of the back to back tomorrow night in Dallas. That leads to Arvid Soderbloom most likely going when the Blackhawks hit the road and play in the American Airlines Center down in Texas. So there are both teams. Projected, projected lineups for a big-time tilt tonight at the United Center. Again, 7 p.m. Central Time puck drop with the game nationally broadcasted on TNT. Going to take a quick break here, Blackhawks fans, but when I return, I'll dive into my three keys to victory for the Blackhawks to win a third consecutive game. But first, real quick, I got to talk to you all about the fine folks over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action in the second half of the regular season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and will have the opportunity to win $150 worth of bonus bets if that first $5 bet cashes. And the FanDuel Sportsbook app now gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place so that when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can go and check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more 
on the same page where you also happen to place your bets. And I know it's been a tough last couple of weeks for our Chicago Bears, a heartbreaker to the Washington Commanders, and then a pretty disastrous performance against the Arizona Cardinals. However, if you believe that the Bears are going to rebound in a big way this week against the sorry New England Patriots, then be sure to go and jump on over to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com. Bet the Bears on the money line, and if you're not already a member, create an account. Just put $5 down on the Bears' money line, and if that bet cashes, you'll be gifted 150 worth of bonus bets guaranteed. So be sure to go and check out FanDuel.com right now to take advantage of this amazing offer where, again, all you have to do is create an account and you'll have a chance to win $150 worth of bonus bets if your first $5 bet cashes. So never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Did just want to say thank you real quick to everyone for making Lockdown Blackhawks your very first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, be sure to go and check out the Lockdown Fantasy Hockey Podcast so that you can become a fantasy hockey expert and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. And you can easily find the link to Lockdown Fantasy Hockey down in the description, or simply search on YouTube and wherever you may be listening to your podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Segment two, per usual, when the Blackhawks uh, have a game later on this evening, I'll be going over my three keys to victory tonight for the Hawks to win three consecutive games for the first time since February of 2023. That's right, it's been nearly Two years since the Blackhawks have won three consecutive games, so it would be really big to get this one tonight. Always love beating the Red Wings. Would be nice to get the better of Patrick Kane and Alex DeBrinkett, considering how the last time those two uh, played at the United Center, considering how that game ended. Let's go and get two points against the Red Wings tonight. But here are my three keys for the Blackhawks to make it happen. Number one is don't let the old friends run wild. Those are the leading offensive leading the offensive leaders in the driving forces for the Red Wings offense up front. And I mentioned the big four earlier, Lucas Raymond, Patrick Kane, Alex DeBrinkett, and Dylan Larkin. Those are the four you really need to circle. I mean, you probably need to circle JT Confer too, because every time he plays the Blackhawks, it's like he's Sidney Crosby or something. But those are the big four you really got to pay attention to. And if you can limit what those four players do offensively for the Red Wings, I like the Blackhawks' chances of winning this game. I don't think the Red Wings have enough secondary store scoring to get the job done, and they really lean on these big guns to go and do the heavy lifting offensively. So if the Blackhawks can limit the DeBrinket, Larkin, and Kane line, I expect them to get at least one point here tonight, but if you can limit them from having multi-point performances, I think it's going to be hard for the rest of the Red Wings offense to kind of match what the Blackhawks put up. So limit that top line. I think that puts the Blackhawks in a good spot to win this game. My second key to victory for the Blackhawks is to carry over the power play momentum they established on Sunday in Anaheim. The Blackhawks converted on both of their man advantage opportunities, and that's what wound up being the difference in a 4-2 to game in which, you know, Anaheim was the better team at even strength. They let in shot attempts, scoring chances, high danger chances. They had the edge in all of that, but the Blackhawks got really good goaltending, and they were excellent in the special teams department. And the power play had been blanked in each of the two previous games, so if the Blackhawks can carry over that momentum here tonight, also against a Detroit Red Wings penalty kill that's really struggled so far this year. As I mentioned in segment one, they rank 29th out of 32 teams while being shorthanded through their opening 11 contest. So carry over that momentum that the power play generated in the win against the Ducks. Go and get a goal on the man advantage tonight. I think that's going to be huge in lifting the Blackhawks' chances to win. And then third, and certainly not least, is to get the mojo back. Despite the Blackhawks getting a pair of victories over the weekend, they certainly didn't play their best games and were heavily outshot, heavily possessed in both of them. And even though during their, was that a four-game homestand? Yeah, four-game homestand, even though they went 1-3-0, and um, I thought the play, the way that they were playing the games, there was more consistency in their game. They were leading in shots on goal, the team that 
was getting the better of the possession battle. So I would like to see the Blackhawks get back to that here tonight as they return to home ice. I know, funny enough, that's just how the weird game of hockey works. That style of play didn't lead to victories as they were 3-7-1. and one. But I think if they play the way they did over the weekend, you know, they were fortunate to win both of those games. That's not going to continue. They're not going to continue winning games with that style of play. They can't ask their goaltender to stand on their head on a nightly basis. So if the Blackhawks can kind of get their consistency back, don't get absolutely dominated in terms of the possession numbers, and if they can actually win the possession and shots on goal battle, I think that's going to be huge for their chances to win tonight as well. Last but certainly not least here for segment two, got to go over my best bet, courtesy of the fine folks at FanDuel, which has been working rather nicely here these past couple of games. Looking at the lines courtesy of FanDuel as of the time of this recording, it's still 8.30 Central Time uh, as I'm here in the studio. Red Wings are currently the favorites on the money line, but by a minimal margin, they are minus 122, while the Hawks are plus 102 on home ice. The puck line minus one and a half for the Red Wings is plus 198, while plus one and a half for the Blackhawks is minus 250. And then the over-under very close as well. Over six and a half is currently plus 102. Under six and a half is minus 124. And as always, I go back and look at some of the recent history and the battles between these two teams. Blackhawks have been pretty solid against the Red Wings since the start of 2021. They are 8-5 in... Uh, is that, is that right? Yeah, 8-5-1 and one in the last 14 meetings against the Red Wings. Just had to make sure my math still checked out there, Blackhawks fans. 8-5-1 and one are the Hawks in the last 14 meetings against Detroit. Since the start of 2021, over 6.5 has hit in 7 of those 14 games. So choose wisely if you're going to be betting on the over-under, but I do think this could be a good little spot for you to bet on the Blackhawks at plus money. Good Past record against the Red Wings returning on home ice. They've gotten some good rest. I think it's a good spot for them to get their first three-game winning streak since February 2023. Looking at the anytime goal scores, Dylan Larkin's the favorite at plus 150. Bedard is next at plus 170. Then Debrinkit's at plus 195. Kane's at plus 210. Raymond plus 230. Bertuzzi plus 260. Tarasenko plus 280. Tara Vinen plus 280. And then Hall plus 300, Felino plus 310, and Philip Kurashev plus 340. As far as my plays, I was torn between two guys for the Red Wings. I'm going to take Vladimir Tarasenko anytime goal scorer. And I hate Vladimir Tarasenko, one of my most hated players. But the reason that I hate him is because he's one of the biggest Blackhawks killers of my generation. I mean, this guy tears it up. Every time against the Blackhawks, I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but it's almost like a goal per game, I swear. Vladimir Tarasenko, his time in St. Louis, would score every time he was playing against the Blackhawks. I've watched enough Blackhawks hockey to know that. So I'm going Vladimir Tarasenko anytime goal scorer at plus 280. Quite honestly, I don't hate a JT comp for anytime goal scorer bet at plus 400. I think that's really good value as well, but I did end up going with Vladimir Tarasenko. I think he's going to get some good looks if they go on the power play as well. My other little parlay that I put together, uh, the anytime goal scorers has actually been what's cashing recently, but the parlay that I've put together, Alex Dabrinkit to get one plus point and Ryan Donato to record two or more shots on goal. That's plus 124, which I think is really good value. Dabrinkit and Kane, I mean, anytime Blackhawks legends come and play this team, they seemingly pick up a point. So I had to have either Kane or Dabrinkit on the parlay, go with Alex Dabrinkit, paired with Ryan Donato, only to have two shots. And he's look, he's getting a chance on the top line again tonight. Could be out there with the top power play unit, two shots on goal. Not asking very much out of the leading goal scorer for the Blackhawks. But there is everything to know ahead of tonight's puck drop at the United Center, 7 p.m. Central Time. One final reminder, before I wrap things up, I do still have to get into a real quick injury update on Alec Martinez and Laurent Brassois. But first, I got to talk to you all about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. And Prize Picks is also the easiest and most exciting for way, way for you to now 
play daily fantasy sports because all you have to do is simply pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Do you think Connor Bedard can score more than 0.5 goals tonight against the Red Wings? Or how about Patrick Kane to get more than one and a half points in his second game back at the United Center? You can now cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this hockey season when you and your crew run your game with prize picks. And one thing I really do like about prize picks, it's the only real daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. So that way your lineup stays in play, even if one of your players were to get injured. So be sure to go and download the prize picks app today and use the promo code lockdown NHL in all caps to get $50 when you put $5 down again. That's the app prize picks with code lockdown NHL to get a free $50 when you place your first $5 down prize picks run your game. Segment three, before I close out today's episode, did want to get into a couple of Blackhawks injury updates as the team is still not expected to have Alec Martinez nor Laurent Brassois for either of their back-to-back games here in the middle of the week. And it's been tough for the Blackhawks to not have Alec Martinez on the back end. They're really missing him in terms of uh, the depth because that leads to both Nolan Allen and uh, Wyatt Kaiser having to be in the lineup. And in fact, because TJ Brody has struggled so much, the Hawks have Isaac Phillips in the lineup right now as well. So really needing Laurent, uh, Alec Martinez back. And then for Laurent Brassois has been a pretty dragged out knee injury, but we have gotten some updates from head coach Luke Richardson following practice yesterday down at fifth third arena. Martinez, who's been out with a groin injury was seen skating prior to the Blackhawks practice yesterday, but did not participate in practice. And quite honestly, the way that Richardson talked about Alec Martinez prior to going on that five game road trip, I pretty much assumed that Martinez was going to be able to return for the back half of the trip. And obviously he didn't wind up playing in any of those five games and looks like he's not going to be playing tonight and probably not tomorrow against Dallas as well. And he's been out since October 15th against Calgary. So we're closing in on a month, Blackhawks fans. Martinez uh, tonight would be his 10th consecutive game out of the lineup. So really would like to get him back sooner rather than later. Same with Laurent Bressois. I know Arvid Soderblom has been really solid in net, but the tandem the Blackhawks were supposed to have in goal, I thought was, I mean, it has been one of their strengths thus far, but I figure uh, with Laurent Bressois, it's going to be even stronger. Bressois was not on the ice yesterday as he... Uh, was in the gym, though, according to head coach Luke Richardson. They are hopeful that he's either going to be on the ice today during the morning skate or maybe skating by himself as the Blackhawks have their morning skate or sometime here throughout this week. But for Bressois, the, the news first broke of him having to undergo meniscus surgery on, I went back and looked, it was August 28th, and he was originally given a five to seven week timeline to be out. Well, We're now entering the 10th week of him being out and he's still not even skating at this point. So probably at least a week, a week and a half away from making his Blackhawks debut. Obviously that situation hasn't gone as the Blackhawks would have planned. Um, But hopefully we'll get Laurent Brassois here back some, hopefully we'll get Laurent Brassois back here sometime soon. As far as my expectations with Alec Martinez at least skating he does seem the more likely one to return first I don't think he's obviously not going to play tonight not going to play tomorrow in Dallas I do think when the Blackhawks come back home on Sunday to take on the Minnesota Wild I think that's a potential date to circle for Alec Martinez Uh, for Laurent Brassois I think it is going to be a little bit longer sadly we could be looking at uh, a two-month timeline for Laurent Brassois I don't think he's going to be ready by the time the Blackhawks take on the Minnesota Wild next Sunday. But after that game, they don't play again until the following Thursday when they go on a little mini two-game road trip out west. On Thursday, they play the Seattle Kraken. And then on Saturday, they play the Vancouver Canucks. I'm going to estimate Thursday or Saturday. One of those two road games out west is when Laurent Brassois is going to make his team debut. Again, I think Alec Martinez is going to be a little sooner than then, possibly this weekend when the Blackhawks take on their Central Division foe, Minnesota Wild, for the first time this season. Would be two huge returns for the Blackhawks to help out their defense in goaltending. 
All right, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for joining me on the show. Be sure to go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube and to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now, wherever you may be listening to your podcast. That way you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman can go and find me on X at Jack Bushman too, but be sure to go and follow my strictly Blackhawks account at Talking Hockey. That way you can get all of the latest Blackhawks news and updates. Until tomorrow's episode, everyone, go Hawks. Would love to make it three wins in a row here tonight, especially against the Detroit Red Wings. We're due to go and beat them after the way the last game ended. So until tomorrow's recap episode, everyone enjoy the rest of your Wednesday nights, and I'll see you next time on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.